Welcome everyone to a CUDA worksheet tutorial. We're doing geometric means today. We already did arithmetic means, and this is the extension. This is like the next level up. What do I mean by that? Well, arithmetic means uh, is a sequence which we add uh, a number each time. So two, four, six, eight. This was arithmetic because we add two. Two plus two is four, plus two is six, plus two is eight. Now we're doing Geometric. Geometric means we multiply each time. So we start with 2, we multiply by 2, we get 4. Times 2, we get 8. Times 2 is 16. Times 2 is 32. So now we're doing multiplying each time, repeated multiplication, and that's why it's called the sequence. Geometric, okay, multiplying sequence over and over again. So how do we set these problems up? Well, these problems are set up by understanding that we can find first the rate of change, how much it's changing, oops, changing each time and then finding using that change to find the next or desired numbers okay so let's see here if we have negative three we know that we're going to be multiplying by some number x to get this unknown number and then we're going to be multiplying by x again to get 108 so how do we set this up in terms of an expression or an equation well we know that we're starting with uh, let me underline this negative 3 so we start with negative 3 and we know that we're going to be multiplying by X and then we're going to be multiplying by X again to get negative 108 I can't just do negative 3 times X equals my unknown value let's call it n because I have two unknown uh, values there and I, I can't get anywhere so I have to use my known values which in this case is negative 108 as part of my process. So I have here negative three times, let me move this up, negative three times x times x equals 108. I can simplify this a little bit and call this negative three times x squared equals negative 108. Because x times x equals x squared. It's repeated multiplication is exponents. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve for x. I divide by negative three, divide by negative three, so I gotta get my calculator out, I do 108 and divided by three, negative, it's negative divided by negative is positive, so I get x squared equals positive 36. I'm gonna take the square root, I'm gonna take the square root of both sides, that's how you undo the square, and I get x equals six. Okay, um, so I know I'm gonna be multiplying by six each time. So let's go ahead and change this x to a negative six, or uh, six. Technically it would be either one, it could be a negative six, we don't know. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and multiply negative three times six and that gives us negative 18. And then negative 18 times six is 108. So that's how we do uh, this problem by first finding the change. Now let me show you one more time how this works. So here we recognize again, we multiply by x, we multiply by x, we're multiplying by x twice, so we do negative two times x times itself twice, x squared equals negative 18. We divide by negative two, we divide by negative two, we get x squared equals positive nine, we take the square root to undo it, and we get x equals three. So you can use this process to find all these answers in terms of the change, then apply the change to determine your missing value. So here's our missing value. Negative two times three is gonna give us negative six, and negative six times three is in fact negative 18. Now, your teacher may tell you about the geometric mean, okay, and the formula for determining geometric mean, and that's what I'm gonna talk about real quickly here. What if we don't wanna find the change, but we just wanna find this number here? Let's say we didn't know it was negative six, and instead we're gonna call it n. Well, if this in fact is multiplying, this sequence is multiplying by the same thing each time in the sequence, times something, times something, times something. Let's, then, let's say we don't even know what it is. We don't even know what it's multiplying by each time. But as long as it's multiplying by the same thing each time, then we're gonna have some, uh, we're gonna have some, uh, some proportions and ratios that are gonna be true. What do I mean by that? Well, if we're multiplying by the same th thing each time, we can take, a number in the sequence and divide by the previous number, okay, so in this case, n divided by negative two, and that's gonna be equal to 
the number in the next sequence divided by the previous number, negative 18 over n. Okay, in a simpler example, okay, let me go ahead and do the, remember we started with 2, uh, 4, uh, 8, 16, 32. Remember we started with that one? If we take 32 divided by 16, it should be equal to any of the other terms divided by the previous one. So 8 divided by 4, is that the same thing? Okay, are these equal? 32 divided by 16 is 2. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 16 divided by 8 is 2. So it's the same thing each time. 2, 2, 2, 2. So it's going to be equal. So if we do this term divided by the previous one and divided by the previous one, that's this, and then do 18 divided by the previous one, the unknown value, negative 18 divided by the previous one, they're going to be equal to each other because that's what it means to be a ge geometric mean. Now, one thing I always look for as I'm teaching and, and doing it myself for geometric mean is I'm looking for this. The numerator of one side needs to be the denominator for the other, okay? There has to be an n here in the numerator and on the other side, another n there, or it could be a number, okay? But there has to be some sort of equal number here and here, and in this case there is. Obviously, it's the n. So we have an n here in the top, n in the bottom on the other side, and that's how we know we set this up correctly for a geometric mean. Now we cross multiply, what do we get? We get n times n, which is n squared, equals positive 36, right? Negative two times negative 18, positive 36. We take the square root, take the square root, and we get n equals, what is that? Positive six. Okay, so technically this could be a positive six or a negative six because uh, two times three, this can be negative six. And technically the square root of 36 could be plus or minus six. So actually both those answers are correct. But in context, this one probably makes a little bit more sense to leave it as a negative six. But, um, I just kind of glanced over that, but still important to consider. Okay, so negative six or positive six for this one, but see how we use geometric mean instead of finding the change. Now, most of these problems, it's probably better to do the original method I described first uh, because there's multiple slots. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's go and take a look at number 26. So number 26, notice how we have a couple different um multiplication, a couple different changes that we're doing here. Okay, we're not just doing it one time or twice like we did before. That's when we can use the geometric mean is when we only have um, one number in between that we're looking for, the geometric mean between two numbers. Between two numbers. Okay, when you have multiple numbers like this and you're trying to find the geometric sequence, you have to set it up where you multiply by x each time and then we're looking for the missing values. Now, let's go ahead and set this one up. So we have one times, there's my one, my starting one. X times itself four times. One, two, three, four, and we're gonna, it's gonna be equal to 16. I can simplify this to, as one times X to the fourth power equals 16. Well, I can divide both sides by one, not necessary because essentially it's the identity principle. And I have to undo the, the fourth power, so I take the fourth root of both sides, okay? So on your calculator, there's a button that allows you to take the fourth root, okay? So uh, I think it's like usually a secondary button should look like that or something where you type in, whoops, the fourth root there. I zoomed back to the top, okay? But anyway, as you take the fourth root of 16, I'm pretty sure you get two. You get two, okay? So I take the fourth root of 16, I get x equals two. That means I'm multiplying by two each time. Now I can find all these missing values, times two, times two, times two, times two. So I get two, I get four, I get eight, I get 16, and that was just like my original one. Okay, let's do, um, should we do a dividing one? Yeah, let's do a dividing one. Okay, so look at this one. This one looks like, okay, we multiply it by something, multiply by something, multiply by something, multiply by something. This one's getting smaller each time. So we could set this up two ways. We could say we're multiplying by something. So three, one, two, five. And we have this, let's see, one, two, three, four. So we're multiplying by x to the fourth power equals five. That's one way to do this, this problem. 
Another way to say is, okay, I'm multiplying and getting smaller. That's another way of saying division. So I could say 3125 times or uh, times 1 over x dividing by x. Yeah, that's a bad way to put it. Divided by x to the fourth equals 5. These are two different ways to think of it. Um, you're going to see your pattern in two different lights. If I confuse you, don't worry about it. I'm just going to stick with the multiplication since it's more consistent. But you can also think of it this in terms of repeated division which means the exponents go, uh, the, the uh, exponent would go in the denominator, okay? But let's, let me just go ahead and simplify this one. So I do five divided by three, one, two, five, because I have to divide that by both sides. And I'm gonna get a super small number. So five divided by 3,125, and I get x to the fourth equals 0 0.0016, and I have to take the fourth root of that from both sides, so raise to the 0.25 power and I get x equals 0.2 okay so that means I'm multiplying by 0.2 each time so if I'm using a calculator anyway I guess I should just roll with this so I multiply by 0.2 each time 0.2 by the way is equal to 1 over 5 okay so that's what I was trying to say earlier if you were to do it 3 1 2 5 over x to the fourth equals 5 eventually you get x equals 5 and that means you divide by 5 each time dividing by 5 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 Divided by five is multiplying by one over fifth or multiplying by 0.2. So you get the same thing. I just wanted to show you that you can do it two different ways. So we get six, two, five here times 0.2, one, two, five times 0.2, 25, and then we get five. So I hope this cleared things up for geometric sequences and geometric mean. Hope you enjoyed this video. Look forward to seeing it next time on What's Explains Best.